Hey there everybody, Robert Taylor with Orange Cake Creations uh, doing a tutorial video for the biome generate portion of my world building toolkit. So, um, for those who missed the announcement on it, because I know you guys have seen a lot of my tutorials for my biome spline that is not yet in this. Um, there were some things I did not fully understand as far as open world generation uh, that I needed to learn and figure out. Uh, so because of all the diving that I did into Biome Core, I decided to adopt uh, the current Biome Core as my foundation. Um, so I've ripped it all out and made my own utilizing it. And I have made several changes already uh, to make it more user friendly for the designers out there. Uh, so they're not having to go to a bunch of different actors just to find the data that they need to manipulate. It's now all in one one actor uh, for the biome core portion. Obviously per spline it would be on the spline, but for the biome core portion is now all on one actor. Uh, so we're going to be going over all of this in uh, this and future uh, biome generator uh videos i just wanted to make sure that that was out there because as of right now in its state a lot of it visually has not changed i was doing a lot to make it work the way that it's working now to make things easier for everybody else um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get started and so the first thing that you are going to want to do is uh when you start up your own world let me hit g so you can see it uh, you've seen this in my landscape. I also have one that's called BP Biome Generator underscore WW. And uh, that can be found in... Here. Oops, asset. That can be found in Wonderscape Creations, PCG, Blueprints, Biomes. That's where you'll find it. And that is where everything... Uh, that is, is essentially what you will place. So... When you go to place it, you will go ahead and place it anywhere in your world. Um, it does matter where where it is placed. Okay, don't know why I decided to do that. Um, but I have made things slightly easier. I am working on an algorithm that will automatically place it directly in the center, but for now uh, of your landscape. But for now, everything is manual. Uh, so as you can see, it covers the whole landscape and ex uh, exactly the amount it needs to to uh, increase performance. Uh, essentially, what you need to understand is when placing this, you need to make sure that it is positioned um, in, in a way that is, let's see, where's my math? You would center by multiplying the overall resolution of the landscape by the scale of the landscape, then subtracting 100 and dividing by 2. So let me show you what I mean by that. If we go to the landscape here, calculator out, and we see that the overall resolution is 2017. Now we need to multiply that by the scale. It'll always be the scale of X and Y. If Z is different, it doesn't matter. Multiply it by 100. Now you want to take away 100 and divide by 2. And right now you're saying 100,800. And if you look at the location, it is at negative 1,800. So if you add 1,800 to it, obviously in this scenario, it's 0, 0, which is why it's in 0, 0. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is if you're making a game like me where there's going to be multiple landscape actors, you need to understand this basic math uh, so that you're able to find the exact center because that is important, not only for this uh, tool, but for uh, the next one that we will go over uh, in the next episode. Uh, so what is within this actor 
is where, like I said, everything is for the biome instead of having to have multiple actors that the biome looks for. <clears throat> so obviously we have a Just Bounds and Sprite, uh, which we'll go over soon. Clean PCG and generate PCG. That way you're not having to go into the PCG components all the time. Now, that leads me to a very important bug that is known by Epic Games and is something that they are hoping to have fixed by 5.5, but I want to make sure you guys are aware of it. When you place this tool in there, no matter what, is partitioned is going to be false. Even if you check mark it in the blueprint um, itself, if I, whoops, come back over here, if I open up the blueprint, and I bring it out over here, go to PCG, if I go to check mark it, it, it won't change. But if you'll notice here, it did change. Oh, it didn't change this time there. Essentially, it's having issues with is partitioned. Oh, it's redoing everything because now it's thinking that it's making it true. If I were to check it again, it would make it false and I don't want to go through all of that generation again. So I'm going to let it do its thing. Close that. So, yeah. That is uh, the flaw that we are currently stuck with in the state of PCG. And that's okay. It's not a huge inconvenience. Like I say, when you first place it, after you've positioned it in the right spot, go to PCG, chart mark is partitioned if you're in an open world setting. <clears throat> now then. The next thing that we need to understand is the bounds. To get it to the exact size that it needs to be, super easy. We already did the math uh, with the calculator that I already closed. And it, uh, it's also, again, super easy because if you go to the landscape, it's just this number with a couple of decimal points. Because if you look at it, it's, it's 1,008. over here one second click on this I have it at 1008.5 now where I got that if you do 2017 times 100 and instead of removing 100 you just divide by 2 1008.5 there it is Again, that math is in the documentation uh, for this. Uh, now, when you place this, you're not going to see any change right now, and that's fine. I also have this set to 200, which I have, um, which mirrors the landscapes uh, size. And uh, again, that's just how I have it. If you have your Z at 100, then 100 would work, but 200 is how I have it set. And then adjusting the sprite Z, so how high or low this is and its color. You don't have to change it, but I gave you that option. Once you've done all those changes, then you hit adjust bounds and sprite, and it'll set up the bounds for you. So after that, there's one thing you need to do because we've adjusted for X and Y, but we have not done so for Z. Uh, the easiest thing to do is to come up here to the top right where you see this uh, these four squares, and you click on it. And as you can see, with this uh, selected, I can now make sure that my bounds uh, completely covers the Z portion of the landscape. Once I've done that, everything's good to go. I can open that up. Now, as I said, in the future, I will be uh, making this all automatic. Uh, it's just something that was not high on the list yet. Uh, so I will see you guys in the next episode.